Fabulous. Okay, thank you, Denise, for that intro. And I'll let you bring up my slides and we will launch Verbal Zingers in the Workplace. You may have noticed a title change there. I had originally had um, Verbal Crimes in the Workplace, thinking of Weird Al's song, um, Word Crimes. And someone emailed me and alerted me to, Lori, I'm just not comfortable sending something with crimes to my, <laughs> to my staff. And I thought, okay, lesson learned. I am going to be um, astute and humble and make a change because I am certainly not talking about criminal activity. I am talking about really verbal zingers in the workplace. And we have all experienced times when those uh, verbal bombs, hurtful words have been spoken. And we know the sickening silence, that feeling in your gut when someone has been the recipient of just a negative comment, even character assassination, or a joke that appeared funny to someone was not funny. It was instead hurtful to someone else. And when that happens, then go ahead and advance the slide. Denise, if you would, here we go. We see a picture of it. Some, uh, someone and is angry. And instead of talking about behaviors, what happened, what didn't happen, they launch into character assassination. Forward, Denise. Um, and then distrust occurs because trust is eroded. Click. and relationships are strained. Oftentimes they break down, workplace culture is actually eroded and it feels safe, it feels unsafe in the place that you spend most of your time. It's forward, I don't. And as you can see, frustration occurs. It is not an enjoyable place to be. Keep going, Denise. And oftentimes, attrition skyrockets. We've heard that um, statistics have said that even 50% of the people leave be to get away from what they consider to be a bad manager. And oftentimes, it is the way that people address issues that makes people feel attacked and feel like oh, they've just got to get out of here. Okay, Denise, let's click. So in your chat box, would you go there? And I'd love to see if how much this resonates with you. Tell me, what are some verbal zingers that have been experienced in your workplace? Negative comments, character assassination, sarcasm, actual verbal bombs that you've heard of, hurtful words, or those that have been reported to you. If you're in HR, you're kind of smack dab in the center of that. So I'd love to hear from you. Go to your chat box. Okay, I've heard somebody say, you wouldn't understand. 
I was told I would not move up in the company because I am a large woman. Oh my, oh gosh. That, there we go is a prejudice stereotype. Oh my. Have the girls clean the break room? Yeah, and have them bring out coffee and serve everyone. Um, somebody, women can't be pregnant and do this job. Whoa. Oh my. Well, and we know that there is, there is a reality of gender stereotypes. There are workplaces where they are neutral. There is no stereotypes, but that is rare. And so stereotypes exist. Faulty, um, faulty beliefs that really trap people, limit them, be, they become the target. Oh gosh. Okay, any more while well, we are, oh, I don't know why we are doing this. This is a waste of time. When, when communication isn't clear, when purposes aren't made clear, people don't just know things without being informed of things. Here, someone said a supervisor once shared, not that anyone on the team has this knowledge when I clearly did. Whoa, okay. Can Communication, key to the a successful team. Oh, okay, we have a, I bet you voted Democrat. We have more political divide and slander. And when we see it in the world, we are going to see it in the workplace. How do we set up some parameters? How do we recognize that there are differences and respectfully respond to people. And sometimes those conversations can be valuable. Sometimes people want a place to escape hearing different political positions. And so we need to be able to navigate conversations. We need to be able to speak up and say, hey, I'm comfortable with, uncomfortable with this. Can we change the topic to something more work-related or something that we both agree with? And we also need to be able to say, we're, we're going to respect different people's positions. It won't be our job to, to train someone, to change somebody's. Okay, HR isn't hard to do. Whoa, from the VP of HR to the entire company. Ouch, ouch. Well, I tell you, HR becomes such a target of attack. When problems escalate, people run to HR and HR gets kind of trapped in the middle and tries to mediate. And it's, it's easy for people to either see them as the enemy or see them as an accomplice to a crime of administration. So gosh, you are in the hardest place in the world. And I call HR people relationaries. They are, they care about relationships. And when they break down, people come to them. HR cannot wave a wand and change culture. They are aware of needed changes in culture. And so more than, more than working with any other individual, I typically connect with the HR and support them. I think more than anyone who needs to be supported, it is, it is our HR professionals. Okay, somebody said, that sounds like a great idea. Did you come up with it yourself? Oh, okay, now there is a backhanded compliment. That is why we were having this webinar. Okay, you're overreacting. That's not that big of a deal. Whoa, okay, talk about a dismissal. I have recently worked with a company and um, HR has brought up concerns, but they have been dismissed 
are overlooked. And so what we have done is put together a list of concerns and we have put uh, them according to the supervisor's job responsibility. So when those concerns are voiced, we've talked about what kind of risk by not addressing this issue, what kind of risk happens and what kind of perception does this create? So we have we've done that in order to bring a deepen awareness of by not addressing these certain issues, you yourself are at risk of being negligent in giving needed feedback and in speaking up when culture is at risk. So hard place to be. You're overreacting. It's not out of big, oh my gosh. You guys are heroes just to be where you are and trying to navigate these. So I am delighted to be able to give. We're going to do a framework today, as well as I'm going to give you a little practice time to write responses to how you will respond to these verbal zingers. Okay, someone listed instruction of parent company to HR manager of an acquired company. You need to make changes as we as we need yet do so to get buy-in from all, but so in a way that doesn't cause disruption. Okay, you, HR does not have a magical wand. If we need to make changes, we need to get to the root of problems and we need to build an openness and communication that we can speak to those to bring about needed changes. And we also need to get a buy-in and awareness of management and leaders in addressing needed changes. Wow. Okay, great, great feedback gang. Thank you for your response. Denise, let's move on and let's get into giving people some you know, strategies for how we respond. First of all, silence is not a solution to anyone, to the people who receive that verbal zinger. And silence is not okay for leadership and administration. Yet, let's click, Denise. Neither is fighting. And our knee-jerk response when we get a verbal zinger is to launch one right back. Fighting, though, is not a solution. It will only escalate. Forward, Denise. Today, I will give a demonstration. As a matter of fact, Denise and I will really role play. I will play Barry, the gentleman on the right, and Denise will play Matt. And Barry is going to navigate a difficult conversation, but he will effectively and yet respectfully address a verbal zinger launched by Matt. So Denise, if you will move us forward, and would you play Matt starting with that verbal zinger to Barry? That is a stupid idea and destined to failure. Okay, now, as Barry, what I am going to do is I am going to open up this conversation, my response, with a positive one. What I want in this case for this relationship. Next, move us forward, Denise, I will identify the behavior. What exactly was it that Matt did? Okay, move us forward. And in doing that, I will, I will point out the actual words that he spoke that I found really offensive. I will then talk about the impact, how that came across to me, what it does to our relationship. Once um, you will notice how Matt will respond and he's going to do really what I would call a dismissal. And so then I am going to do two things. You will watch how I acknowledge his concern. No, acknowledging doesn't mean I agree, but I let Matt know that I've heard him because quite often they can't hear you, what you have to say until you've acknowledged that you've heard what they just said. And then I will do a contrast talking about what I want what I don't want. 
And then next, Denise, I will, because I want to change moving forward as Barry, I will ask moving forward for an agreement from Matt in making a needed change. Okay, Denise, let's go ahead. Let's play this out. And you start with Matt's zinger. Oh, I get to say it again. You do. <laughs> that is a stupid idea and it's destined to failure. Click, click. Matt, I want us to have a positive and respectful working relationship. Click. Keep going. When I heard you say that my idea for cutting spending is stupid and destined for failure, your words came across to me as disrespectful and an attack on my intelligence. Lighten up, Barry. Everyone has a right to express their own opinion. I don't think you're stupid. I simply disagree with your idea and believe it will cost us more money than it will save us. Matt, you may certainly disagree with my thinking. It's inevitable that there will be times when we will disagree. What's not okay is calling my idea stupid. I interpret that as a verbal insult. Moving forward, when you disagree, I'd like a commitment from you to simply tell me that you disagree and explain why you disagree without making negative comments or insults, okay? Now, gang, your turn. I want you to get ready to go to your chat box, and I am going to have you write out how you would dialogue in the case of, Denise, let's give them the scenario. If Matt just said to you, if you believe that political view, you are an idiot. So think about, I would like you to either use this example, or if you have one of your own, you want to respond to a verbal, um, a verbal zinger that someone has spoken to you or you have heard spoken, I want you to begin to compose your, and let's move it forward, your positive want thinking about what you want, and this is for the relationship or for the person. It's not from them, what you want them to stop doing, that comes later. What kind of a relationship do you want with this person, the relationship? An example that Barry gave earlier is, Matt, I want us to have a positive and respectful working relationship. So click us forward, Denise, and everyone go to your chat box, click one more time, Denise, and show me in the chat box, how would you open a response to Matt, who has just called your position a political idiot? <laughs> what would you write? And I am going to, I'm in the chat box. Okay, okay. Beth has said um, that really she's to this person, I want you to be open to have a different view. And I also want there to be respectful and collaborative working relationships. Great want. Someone else, what would you say to Matt? Could be, okay. Okay, Matt, we all have different views. I'd like us to talk about a way to talk respectfully about this. Lovely job, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. 
I want to respect your views, Matt, and I want to know that you are respecting mine. Like us to maintain a positive, respectful relationship. I, want I have you one, to... Lori. I have one sent to me in a private um, saying. Oh, okay. The the words are. Uh, I want you to think about the words you just used. Oh, okay. And that would be, you know, moving directly to kind of that, that would be from the person. Mm -hmm. So you kind of, and that works. Mm -hmm. What you've really done is move to moving forward or before we go on, think about those words. How do you think I might have interpreted those? And then you can give the, that's part of being curious. You're not attacking, but you are giving an invitation. Beautifully done. Um, uh, Preston says, Matt, we have to work together a lot. That isn't the kind of negativity we need in our relationship. And it just isn't proactive. Okay. Okay. Some great examples there. What's great is they're in the chat box. Why I love giving people a chance to respond is because, see, you're hearing different ways of responding. And quite often we hear people responding disrespectfully or not in the best way and so when we can hear it hear different ways you've I've, it seems like you've got some tools in your toolbox for when these verbal um verbal zingers occur oh okay and some people have really moved into already kind of the impact and how it came across to them um, Matt, I hear condemnation and a view, and I love that they said, I hear, not you need to stop. It's well done. And a view that my politics are not yours. Um, I am asking you to communicate respectfully so that we can have a, a collegial um, relationship. So we've even used some of the others. Okay, and somebody was using a combination of both. Matt, we have different views. I would like for us to respect each other, even if we do not agree. Well done. Okay, well done. So, and some of you have done more than just the positive wants, what you want for the relationship, but you've also talked about some change. So let's move on to what I had as the next step. And Denise, go ahead and pull up a couple more Okay, yeah, that way we can see everything. Now, here is where um, you would identify action. And some of you have already done that. So where you would say, let the person know what it was they did and being specific. Now there's a difference between, as in the example, when I heard you say that my idea is stupid and destined to failure, where they're actually using the verbiage, notice how different that is than you were disrespectful. You disrespected my political position. Quite a bit of difference in when I heard you say that my idea is stupid, you are giving an I message, how it came across from you, it's not coming across as accusatory, but you're also very specific. You're not just saying you're disrespectful, but you're being specific to them and telling them what words were offensive to you. People can argue whether something is disrespectful or not, but when you use the specific words, you let them know that word and how it came across to you. So take a moment, go to the chat box, and how would you tell specifically to Matt what the action was that he did? Not you don't you don't have to step into how it came across, but how would you let be specific in identifying the action, what he did? And again, we have the political comment, what the person did. Oh, and use an I message. And I will open up the chat box. Would love to hear you. 
um, the example, when I heard you say that my idea is stupid and destined to failure. So if you can open up with an I message. Matt, when I hear you. Okay, I'm not seeing any. Denise, are, are you? I no, think so. Um, I th you know, there's people it, answered there's it earlier. A, yeah, we've got a couple that are starting to come through. I think there could also be some confusion because it seems so much like the previous is and and so many of us actually did combine the two already. Yes, mm -hmm. agreed. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Many of them, um, nearly everyone had had both of those those put in. So what I um, sometimes I break it down to make sure that people include both. Oh, yeah. Oh, and somebody here said, remind me what his actual words were. And I'm, um, Denise, you'd have to back yeah. up for yeah. that. Um, I need a, okay, because I need a reminder of this scenario. A, okay. Yeah, if you believe that political view, you are an idiot. Okay. So probably starting, so something to starting when I hear you call me a political idiot is an example of that. Mm -hmm. A uh, great response that I got privately. I heard you say the word idiotic, which really isn't appropriate feedback for the workplace. And I want us to offer constructive criticism rather than insults. Wow. Wow. And you might even take the criticism to some feedback. E either one, though, is quite appropriate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And really good point in that positive wants and the action. Uh, I want us to have a positive relationship. When I hear you call me an idiot, political idiot. So tell you what, let's um, move forward. Oh, I, I love Deanna's. Yeah, that's um, a great one. Matt, when I hear, when I hear that to, um, when I hear holding that political view, Okay, when I hear of the holding my political view really makes me an idiot. I am concerned that you don't respect me. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And there we've also got the impact. And let's move forward to the impact. I think next time what I'll do, I'll have people just combine everything at once. And as you could see, it was already, somebody already talked about impact, yeah. be it, um, it makes me feel disrespected, mm -hmm. the impact. And um, in the earlier example that I gave, Barry told Matt, it comes across to me as disrespectful and an attack on my intelligence. So let me know, go to the chat box if anybody has something else to add. How might, what's the impact? What's at risk to the relationship? What kind of consequences happen as a result of somebody saying that? Let's see if anyone can add or enrich that. Mm. Oh, I like what Lisa did. I respect your political views. However, these types of comments are not appropriate in the workplace. It come across as all should agree with your political views. Okay. Okay, I think I think everybody's clear on that. The mm -hmm. impact and let's go, let's move forward with the moving forward, asking for an agreement, get those lines. Okay, what might you say? What what would you ask? Matt, moving forward. What kind of a change? And here is what you want from him in the future. The example I gave in the earlier conversation was moving forward. When you disagree, will you agree to tell me what you disagree with and why you disagree without making negative comments or attacks? So go to your chat box. What would you say to Matt asking for an agreement that change moving forward? And Lisa, you got some compliments, a compliment from Preston, loved your response. 
Oh, oh, I like press. Please keep these conversations civil, but mostly professional. And to particularly once you've said the words that he used, when I heard you say these words, it came across to me as quite disrespectful. So being real specific there. Oh, I think what is in this example is a good response. Thanks, David. Okay. Okay, Diana um, was talking about, I want to build trust and understanding. There's her positive want. We can discuss political issues in the workplace, but need to be willing to consider viewpoints. No one here is an idiot. Whoa, love that. Uh, and Andrea, Matt, in the future, if you disagree with me, I'd appreciate you to keep your comments respectful. Mm -hmm. Right. You can disagree, but you can't disrespect. So, and, and see, that's what I did there was even a, a contrast. You can have your own opinion, you cannot, it's not okay to communicate it in a negative, disrespectful way, such as stupid or calling me an idiot. I have one sent to me privately. Uh, mm, Matt, okay. I want us to have a productive work relationship. When I hear that type of statement, specifically about my perceived beliefs, it doesn't make me feel comfortable in seeking you out for future collaborations. It makes yeah. sense that if we may not always agree, but I think we can both agree that it is important we feel comfortable working with each other, even if we have different opinions. Can we agree that we will keep these type of comments out of our conversations? Wow. 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 Okay. I hope you you're all what? planning on saving the chat, guys, because there's oh. some great, great stuff for you to use. Exactly. This is going to be such an amazing resource for people. <laughs> And at a time of COVID, when people are working virtually, where there is just frustrations, technology breaks down, having these tools. And not only are we talking respectfully, but we're teaching them to be better. We're teaching them to be more humanizing, to more to value relationships and to build them, not break them down. Wow. Okay. Just this chat alone <laughs> is amazing. Um, let me see. Let me see. Um, let me. I'd appreciate, I think, um, let me see, Lisa said, Matt, moving forward, can we agree that you will be mindful of how your comments will impact others and recognize that not everyone shares the same views? I mean, here we're talking about you know, mindfulness and culture. Um, Matt, I have appreciated the respectful and collaboration we have had in the past. Whoa, okay and am saddened and disappointed by your remarks. So their impact on this person. I request in the future that we focus on our work together and that you be respectful in acknowledging that reasonable people may disagree on some matters. Okay, whoa, Beth, you are a diplomat. <laughs> Amazing. And um, Beth, I found out, is really a neighbor of mine. California, we're just um, a few neighborhoods away from each other. Okay, Victoria. Matt, moving forward, I request that we both agree to respect each other's views and not be disrespectful to each other. That's lovely, Victoria. And what you may have to do is, if you haven't already pointed out, when I hear you saying stupid that to me is disrespectful so let's just take that word out of the vocabulary so okay oh and she got a compliment from Liliana and okay and here's one that Denise just read oh um is this the one that you already read Denise out loud 
you know what? It's so good. I'm going to yeah. read it. Uh, the, the reason why I put it on there is just for those who are saving the chat, since I read it, you mm -hmm. didn't have it in the chat. And so I went yeah. ahead and copied okay. it. Yeah, it's a great resource. Yep. You got to, I like the one Denise read. So um, thank you. And someone sent that to us um, confidentially. So I so appreciate that. Okay. Whoa. I can't think, I cannot thank people enough, these resources, just for me to be able yeah. to take this chat box yeah. and be able to pass these on. Um, that's pretty amazing. And I I think it's just an example, but knowing that many people, majority of you are from HR, it just shows me how masterful you are in being able to respectfully address disrespectful behavior, bringing awareness and promoting a positive change. So with that, let's, um, let's move forward. And in your team, I've composed four questions. Um, Denise and I were talking about how could we make these webinars into a, a really into a professional development session for those of you who are on as a team or you want to get into this and use it as a, a team discussion, you can go from what we've the recording that we've just finished and the content we've just finished to now in your group here are four questions so write these down if you would like and, and use these and following up afterwards first question have everybody identify workplace verbal zingers if you've heard something it's likely that somebody else will and I have found that sometimes you get a zinger and you go, oh my gosh, you go, how do I respond to that? Well, sometimes thinking about it afterwards, instead of feeling like, oh, I didn't know what to say, you then think about it, you, you plan a response. So when it happens again or a similar one, you are ready. Okay, let's move to a second question. Something else you could do in your group after sharing verbal zingers invite everyone to share the dialogue they composed. Hearing somebody else's dialogue can be so valuable. I have found that quite often as I hear people, I change mine or further develop it and think, oh, I like that. So valuable resource there. Let's keep going, Denise. Third thing. What did you learn today via this time together that was valuable? When you talk about things, it just puts it in the front of your memory. And I think it makes it more available in the future. You will retain it as well as it becomes a great conversation starter. Let's look at a fourth and final um, question that you can ask in your group. What do you plan to apply? what today was said, what dialogue was composed, or what kind of strategies were available, did you learn that you would apply, such as opening with positive wants, identify the action, the impact, what you want moving forward. I think we even did an acknowledgement and contrast. So what do you plan to apply when everyone shares you've got, you're going to hear some valuable application. And I think we just got a comment in the, let me see from Beth, um, being present in the moment helps, even to initially comment to the person who made the remark, that what was said was concerning, and you need to give it some thought before meaningfully responding. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Beth, I have found that um, sometimes I've said, whoa, I need some time to respond to this. I do not want to do a knee jerk response. So I am going to just walk away from this conversation and we will talk about it later. And I have found that also, um, but you don't want to wait too long. So I have found that, um, you know, within the next 24 hours, say within the next 24 hours, 
I will come and, and we can we can talk about this before you know any more time elapses. And it really gives people time to think. Um, what is interesting, even with my background as a school teacher, <laughs> we were taught just um, classroom management. If a student does something disrespectful, um, blurts out something, just stop, look at them or look down and count to 10. Because quite often it gives somebody a chance to self-correct. And we it also keeps us from that knee-jerk response. So, so thank you, Beth. That was a um, brilliant addition. Um, David says, it's important to address the negative remark right away. Mm -hmm. Even if you say at that moment, Matt, I'd like to talk with you later about the dialogue I just heard. Absolutely, David. Give them a heads up that, whoa, this, this came across to me as you know, serious. I don't want to reattack, launch back, but we, we will talk about it later when I'm in a better place. Yeah, certainly um, wisdom there, David, in giving an, a clue. Beth added, it is important that others in the work area see that that remark did not go unaddressed, especially in cases of inappropriate, biased, or discriminatory comments. Absolutely. Um, and Beth, there is a quote, um, I think it's by Lochner. The workplace culture can be measured by the worst behavior that a manager or that a leader tolerates. And I would also put in or demonstrates. So when behaviors happen and they are not addressed, people lose a sense of safety. They don't feel protected. They feel like they are working in a toxic environment and they don't feel like people are protecting them and, and they're not. So it is important that people see that when that line of respect is crossed, that it is addressed. And we also, though, how do we teach people to speak up? Because quite often they will take us by surprise, we're in shock. So we might need to step away, but do we know how to step back? And how do we speak up respectfully so we don't go to silence, but we don't go to attack? Okay, great comments from people. Um, Preston has said, remember, these are relationship and it's important to be the bigger person and not respond with anything to set them on the defense. Yes. Yes, this will definitely escalate the situation. How do we not feed fuel a fire? But how do we talk? And that's why, how do we talk to people about the impact? They may not have even intentionally have done it, but you talk about the impact. So, and showing them a better way. Otherwise we become um, participators in dehumanizing people. Okay, Beth, there have been times I have simply said, I beg your pardon, um, which has made the person making the remark aware that the comment was inappropriate. There, there you go. It's like that timeout. It's giving them time to self-reflect and correct. Um, creating a respectful workplace and setting standards for respectful communication is essential. Absolutely, it is. It is. Because everything, um, worst case scenarios become norms. Okay. Oh, you guys, thank you. Brilliant, brilliant comments. Anyone else feel free to jump in. We're going to keep that chat box open a little longer. Okay. Okay. Um, Denise, I think we are ready to move to a QA. Um, and let's, um, let me, you have a contact. We wanted to do the uh, the Q and A off 
recording so people can ask questions in mm -hmm. safety without it actually being a part of the recording. So do you want to jump to this end real quick and we'll come back? Yes, to let me do that. Let okay. me do that. And I will also, um, let me, I'm out of the chat box. And what I want everyone to know is that safe conversation skills are learnable. I mean, look at just <laughs> amazing resources available in the chat box. So go ahead and move us forward. I know they're learnable because I have taught managers, HR professionals, business professionals, how to have these difficult conversations and how to address both respectfully um, skillfully, confidently, those verbal zingers, as well as unmet expectations. When you do this effectively, you elevate your leadership, as well as the leadership of others, of those who have crossed the line by bringing awareness and helping them move forward differently in a more respectful way. Move us forward, Denise, and you do this by implementing safe conversation framework, using the different strategies that were modeled, outlined, and that you practice today, even in your chat box. Next, forward Denise, if you would, if it would be valuable to you, anyone attending today, I will be glad to give you a 30 minute safe conversation consultation and we could talk about um, how you could provide training with your organization in navigating these difficult conversations and building a positive workplace culture so if that resonates with you my website is right here www.conversationsintheworkplace.com I also bought .org. All you have to do is hit on that Let's Talk button that was below the, the picture, and it will take you to this page and set up a 30-minute complimentary consultation with me. I will set aside 30 minutes to talk with you. I know it's a heavy responsibility on HR. Culture is important to you. And one person or just an HR team is not going to be able to wave a wand, but together we can create some training and awareness that can be helpful and effective for you. So with that, Denise, shall we move it to our q and I'm going to be stopping the recording here. Uh, let me say this for those who are watching the recording. We thank you for being with us today. We are moving into a private time for questions and answers. We invite you to be live with us on the second Tuesday of every single month where we cover conversations in the workplace. And we thank you for being with us today.